All right, in example C, our function is h of x is equal to x squared over x squared plus one, okay? First thing we wanna do, try to factor and cancel, okay? When I look at the top, there is nothing I can really do to it, okay? I mean, you could, I guess, you can break it down into, you know, x times x, but that's about all you can do. The bottom does not factor, okay? Um, if you remember doing part B, um, this was a difference of squares, like um, the square root of x squared is x and the square root of four is two, and then we broke it down this way and the signs were one of each. That worked because there was a minus sign in the middle. This is also squares, like we have x squared and then the square root of x squared is x and then the square root of one is one. So these are squares, but you're adding in the middle, okay? And when you're adding, when you have a sum of squares, you cannot factor that, okay? So there's absolutely nothing you can try, but you cannot factor this, okay? So really, there's nothing that's going to cancel here, okay? So you go straight to the part where you want to find the bad spots, okay? So we're going to take the bottom and set it equal to zero, okay? And we're going to solve. So we want to get x by itself, so we're going to move the 1 over, and that's going to give us x squared is equal to negative 1, okay? And then you've heard me tell you a million times that if you have something squared equal to a number, you're going to take the square root of both sides and put a plus or minus out front, okay, on the right, okay? Um, so if you look at this, okay, you run into a problem you've got a negative underneath the square root, okay? So remember, um, I have told you in the past that the square root of negative one is i, you've got an imaginary number here, okay? So you've run into a problem, okay? Um, this has happened to us before, like when we were looking for x-intercepts for a quadratic, for example, um, and we had to use a quadratic formula, and we ended up with a negative underneath, we ran into a problem, okay? Um, so just like when you were finding x-intercepts and, and you got a negative under the square root, now you're looking for vertical asymptotes, you end up with a negative under the square root, you ran into the problem to a problem. That means there's no x or sorry, no vertical asymptotes. Okay, so this is bad. Okay, so we can conclude no vertical asymptotes. because you were trying to find the vertical asymptotes, but you ran into a problem when you were trying to go through the process, okay? All right, so again, you can check yourself, okay? Plug this into your calculator, okay? Let me pull out the picture, okay? Here's the graph for 2C, okay? You can see there is no vertical asymptote whatsoever, okay? Remember, this will extend this way forever. This piece will extend to the left forever, okay? No vertical asymptotes, okay? All right, last one, part D, okay? Part D is going to be very informational here. There's gonna, you're, you're gonna see, there's a lot going on with this one, okay? All right, let's start by f of x is equal to x squared minus nine, that is the numerator. The denominator is x squared plus four x minus 21, okay? We need to factor the top and factor the bottom. So let's go ahead and do that, okay? The top is a difference of squares, okay? The square root of x squared is x. The square root of three, or sorry, the square root of nine is three. Okay, and then the signs are one of each. Okay, and then the bottom should factor. Okay, you might have to play around with it. Okay, um, basically you want two numbers that multiply to be negative 21 and add up to positive four. Okay, so let's see here. This will break down into x times x to get the x squared. And then two numbers that multiply to be negative 21 and add up to positive 4, 7, and negative 3. Okay, so you can go ahead and write these numbers down. It's going to be positive 7 and negative 3. You can check this. x squared minus 3x plus 7x minus 21. Okay, so there you go. All right, so we factored the top. We factored the bottom. Now we need to check to see if something cancels. Okay, well, I see an x minus 3 in the top, and I see an x minus 3 in the bottom, so those cancel. Okay, 
So going forward, we are going to use this, okay? This is the reduced form of our rational function, okay? So to find the vertical asymptotes, you want to get the bad spot, okay? But look, there should be two bad spots, okay? There should be two bad spots. When you look at the denominator, okay, and you are trying to set, you know, it equal to zero and solve, okay? You factored it. Um, the bad spots would be negative seven and then positive three, okay? But what happens here, okay, um, to find the vertical asymptote, the rule is to factor the top, factor the bottom, cancel if you can, and then what's left you're going to work with. So the only vertical asymptote is going to result from taking the x plus 7 and setting it equal to 0. Okay, so if we solve this, we get our vertical asymptote is going to be x equals negative 7. Okay, and that's the only one. Okay, so I want to go a step further here. I want to explain to you what happened with this cancellation, okay? Because we can cancel, there is no vertical asymptote at x equals three, okay? I'm gonna write that down. There is no vertical asymptote at x equals three. But something does happen at x equals three. It's just not a vertical asymptote, okay? Um, like I said, when we took this denominator up here, we factored it, okay? So down here is the factorization, okay? Both of these numbers, negative 7 and positive 3, are not in the domain, okay? Because they make, they make you divide by 0, okay? Um, those are the numbers that cause you to divide by 0, okay? Like if I plug in negative 7 into the denominator, I'm going to get 0. If I plug in positive 3 into the denominator, I'm going to get 0. So right out to the side, okay, um, uh, the domain of this function is all real numbers except x equals negative 7 and x equals positive 3, okay? So they both result in, you know, division by 0 when you plug them in, okay? x equals negative 7 has a vertical asymptote, okay? x equals 3 does not, okay? Like I said, something is going on there. What happens, and it's really hard to see from a calculator, so I'm going to tell you, and then I'll show you the picture. Um, because you canceled this, okay? So I'm going to come over here. We canceled this factor, okay? We set it to 0. We're going to get x equals 3, okay? There is a hole there. Okay, so if you can cancel a factor in the top and the bottom, it results in a hole, not a vertical asymptote. Okay, so let me show you the picture. Okay, so when you look at the picture, you're going to see your rational function. You will see a vertical asymptote at x equals negative 7, and there is going to be a hole at x equals 3. Okay? All right, so here's the picture. Okay? All right, so what I have here, okay, the blue part is the graph. Okay? Um, x equals negative 7. Here's the vertical line. Okay? So this part of the graph is going to get closer and closer to the red line, but never touch or cross it. This part of the graph is getting closer and closer to the red line down here not it's not going to cross it or touch it okay if you were to put this in your calculator you probably wouldn't even recognize what was going on at x equals three okay um when i graph this okay um i purposefully put the hole there it's an open circle okay i even have in the notation here above it open circle at three and i actually calculated the y value for you which i don't expect you to do i just need you to know that x equals three there's a hole there in the graph Okay, so this is an open circle. So basically, like, you know, you've got your graph. Okay, everything is nice and continuous until you get to positive 3, and you have to pick up your pencil and put an open circle there, and then the graph keeps going this way forever. Okay, that's what happens um, when you have a rational function and you're able to do this 
cancellation. If you take the factor, set it to zero, that's where you're going to have a hole in the graph. And like I said, if I took my calculator right now and I tried to put this in, okay, so let me go ahead and put it in. Um, put Make sure you put the numerator in parentheses. So there's the numerator divided by the denominator. Okay, close parentheses. Okay, um, my window should be good. All right, so here we go. So yeah, um, here if you count tick marks, negative seven, I'm gonna get that vertical asymptote. But when you get to positive three over here, you have no clue that there is a hole there. This is just not something you can tell from the calculator. Um, it's something you just have to know from the algebra. Um, if I do a second calculate, so second calculate, and I figure out the value, so hit option one, what is the value or what is the y value at x equals three? Okay, you can see there is no output. Okay, that is confirming that there is a hole there. Okay, um, same thing. Remember, if I did second case, calculate the value at negative seven, okay, there's a vertical asymptote there. There's no output. Okay, um, again, at x equals negative seven, there would be no output. Okay, anywhere else, if I pick something random, what's the value at x equals five, I'm going to have an output. Okay, and it goes back to if you were looking at your function, okay, and you were finding the domain of this function, you'd set the bottom equal to zero and solve for the bad spots. The bad spots are negative seven and three, okay? They, you don't have an output there, okay? It just turns out x equals negative seven has the vertical asymptote and x equals three has the hole, okay? So again, finding the vertical asymptotes of a rational function, it's very much tied to domain because you are looking at the denominator and figuring out where it's zero. But you have to do this extra step where you do have to look at the numerator and try to factor it and see if you can cancel with anything in the denominator after you factor it. Okay, so it is a little bit more of a, of a detailed process and you have to know, you know, if you can cancel, that results in a hole. And if you can't, it results in uh, a vertical asymptote.